Hey friends, let me give you a short update of how we strategize our involvement with the Ukrainian refugees. Yesterday morning, we had our board meeting here with the crisis team, and this is what we came up right now in this new phase. This is Romania, this is the city of Arad, and we have three main border points from where the refugees from Ukraine come in. In Sakcha, where our church in Mamaya and several other, uh, uh, our church plants are involved, in Siget and Siret, where most of the refugees are coming in, uh, where the church in Arad and other several Romanian church plants of ours are involved. Uh, we are focusing on Siret and Siget, and I give you an update from there. The Siret point, uh, it's about 10 hours from Arad. There are about 10,000 refugees entering every day. We have two people on the field, Column and Mark, who are there working. And we also are in touch and work through an NGO called Remar. Remar, it's an NGO specialized in refugees. We work with them in the past seven years in Macedonia, in Lesbos, in Serbia. Why do we need an NGO? Because they have big tents to feed hundreds of people. They have big kitchens. They have all of the infrastructure that somebody needs. We, we cannot provide that. But they need food supplies. They need volunteers. They need people that can help take the refugees from there to different other things. So it's good to work with a legal a government recognized because, for example, they are right now working in Ukraine also, not just in Romania. So whenever we send people or food or supplies, they go on both sides of the border. That's why they have volunteers. That's why they are requiring funds and we're trying to help with that. But they don't need uh, supplies for food. Why? Because they work also with Italy and Germany and they're receiving trucks of food. They also don't need lodging because most of the people that are coming right now, they are people, Ukrainians with money, with cars. They have friends and relatives in Western Europe. They don't want to stay in Romania. They want to run out. We expect the big wave to come in probably a week or two when all the poor people that have no relatives, maybe victims of war, they come in Romania, they have no place to stay. That's why we prepare all of these big tents. And at the same time, we prepare our lodging in different villages and, and towns. For now, yes, those tents are full because they're like international students from different countries coming or people that have no papers, they need to do work there. So Tuesday, we have a transportation there and some volunteers coming and Column is our communication person there. At the same time, we have another border, Siget, which is about six hours from here. Sorin is our guy there. Right now, we need to decide with which one of the three NGOs that we're in touch we're going to work with because we want to make sure we uh, try to find a Christian NGO. Remar is a Christian NGO. Uh, right now, we don't have a Christian NGO. But even if we don't have one, we need to find one that we are trusting, and that we can build a personal relationship with them. We work with Red Cross, with UNICEF and so on, but you know, they are too large for such a project. We want to be more personal. Uh, we're going to send a team of cooks on Sunday. And also we want to have a person of sorting refugees. What does that mean is when the refugee come, uh, they take him in and they see if he has the papers, if he needs to transit, if he needs to stay in Romania, if they have medical needs, if they need lodging and so on. It's a crucial person because that will help us distribute the refugees into our own uh, uh, personal lodging and camps where we can help them. Yes, they need food. So we collected yesterday and this week, and this was just the list from yesterday, uh, 66 liters of oil. We collected 69 kilos of sugar, uh, for example, flour, 134 kilos and so on. And uh, we are packing two vans on Monday and we send them there. Also, we are looking for drivers. We have an entire list of drivers. A person of communication, Sorin, but Sorin is a doer. He's there to put tents up, to feed the people and so on. So we want to send someone there that will communicate with us the list of needs and keep us in touch with the NGO. Also, we are gathering funds to buy, for example, beds or, you know, tables or things like this. And on Tuesday, uh, our team is going to go there to strategize and see in the place what can we do to be more efficient in Siget and also in Siret. This is our team from our church. I'll just give an example to see how we organize ourselves. In Siret, the key man is Sorin. In Siget, it's Column. 
for gathering food products and also for our ladies that are cooking for the missionaries, Silvia takes care of that. For lodging is Marius and we gathered this week a, a list of people from our church that are giving free lodging to families and people that might stay in a rod for a few days or maybe longer. Marius takes care of that. Mihaela, she's an um, officer, border officer that is part of our church. And the advantage with that is that she can keep in touch with the authorities. If you need legal papers or immigrant papers, or even at the border, if you encounter some problems, she's coming with us next week to talk with them. Transportation, Marius, Medical, Silvia. Here, I want to make a point. Uh, we are creating a group of pharmacists and medical doctors in our church that will help. For example, yesterday we got a phone call from the director of the pediatric hospital in Chernowitz, which is a big town in the southern Ukraine by the Romanian border. The guy called us because a lot of the sick children from Kiev and Kharkov are coming now to his hospital. He's overwhelmed, especially that his channels of supplies have been cut from Kharkov and Kiev, so they need a lot of supplies. So. Tomorrow, I'm going to meet with the Romanian authorities from our town, maybe our hospital, but also with our believers who can donate medical supplies. And we may want to send one or two trucks in there and maybe even more. Communication is admin. Alex, by the way, yesterday, a uh, uh, dear brother, Ukrainian brother from High Point Sand, the church in Chicago, came here. He speaks Ukrainian and English. He's going to be part of our leadership team, helping with translation and also connecting. Also, a family missionaries from Kiev. They've been there for 25 years. They are refugees now. They joined our church last night. They are helping us with counseling, translating, and other things. So we are forming a team of also mixed different nations here that speak Ukrainian. Uh, volunteers, Nico and funds. It's me and another five people because we want to make sure we don't send funds to private people or NGOs that uh, we do not know. We want to make sure for each amount of money we send, we get a receipt. For example, yesterday we need they needed about 20 tables and about 100 chairs to fill up a tent. And we had to get the receipts from that and also the information what they spend the money on. What are the needs right now? We need, and I'm talking about Romania, we need volunteers to come for four days, first day through Sunday. Why four days? Because Romanians work too. Seven days, maybe Monday through Sunday, or maybe for more days. And we are thinking even paying some people that can take more time to be there at the border. We need drivers. We want to do a strategic visit next week on Tuesday to organize ourselves better. Uh, also, communication twice, so we give you these updates. And also every Friday, 8.30, meeting with all of our core team to figure it out, you know, the updates and also what are the needs. The Health Harvest Church is involved. Vertical Church Europe is involved, like uh, on, on these two channels. The channel that goes to Isakcha is the church in Mamaya, who are heavily involved. With them is the church in Bucharest, Ploiesht, Hunedoara, and Ineo. It's kind of like a line going to the border because many of them, as I told you, they are flooding out of Romania, so we want to take them out. Also, the church in Arad is involved with the church in Cluj, Târgumuresh, and Timisoara, and Kampulung to help and work with the people from the northern part with the refugees that are coming there. Also, we have some uh, new, newly church plants in Europe. They are not big churches, but very hard, hardworking and very heartful churches. They want to supply with funds and also with some products. Also, um, HPS, High Point Sand Network, it's a network of churches. They are partners with us and they want to get their funds and maybe even teams to send here. Alex is part of them, so he, he will interact with them. At the same time, if there are some others, like an Italian person called me, the, it's a Christian, he wants to be involved with us. Maybe some other churches in the U.S. or some other parts. Here we are. This is our strategy for now, for this week. And I want you to see how we organize ourselves and what we are about to do. Thank you so much for your care, involvement, and we praise God for uh, uh, this time of, uh, how should I say it, great moments of evangelism, but at the same time of helping those in need. Praise God for that.